I'm Dr. Dennis Kopp from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, and I hope you enjoy uh, listening to my presentation on the wheel of consumer analysis applied to Colombian entrepreneurs. Very excited to give this presentation and hopefully I'll get a chance to answer some of your questions as well. Now today what I want to do is take a little time and talk about a research project that I um, that's just been completed about Colombian entrepreneurs and I did this with my colleague from Colombia, Dr. Santiago Garcia. And it was a really interesting project. And really what we wanted to do is we really wanted to get into the mind of an entrepreneur and find out how their thought processes were in relation to marketing. Um, and basically the best way to understand the creative genius of an entrepreneur is to try and understand their thought processes. So with that in mind, we had two research questions that we were seeking to answer. First, do traditional marketing strategies apply in context of developing economies? Um, and there's a little research that says that maybe it doesn't, which, we'll, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And secondly, is how focused our entrepreneurs actually are on their customers. Uh, we hear this a lot in the marketing literature and in a lot of popular press books about entrepreneurship that you have to be laser focused on your customer. Um, but we wanna find out, is this really the case and especially how focused are they in different stages of the of their businesses. So one of the ways in which we thought we would take a look at this these questions was to use the framework um, of marketing theory, which is the wheel of consumer analysis. Now the wheel, wheel of consumer analysis basically um, it's this circle. And in the middle, you have the marketing strategy, which the entrepreneur, in this case, the entrepreneur creates. It can be any organization, but in this case, we're specifically interested in entrepreneurs. And we would look at what actually determines the marketing strategy. And it's a constant analysis or reevaluation of entrepreneurs where they look at the environment in which their business operates. Um, and they wanna, and in this, they're also looking at the behaviors of their customers. How are they actually behaving? How are their, their behaviors changing over time? How are they re, uh, interacting with the product? Are they choosing to purchase the product? Those kinds of things. So that's the behaviors of the customers. And finally, the effective and cognitive systems of the customers as well. Like what are the customers thinking and feeling basically? So that's the wheel of consumer analysis in a, in a nutshell. And we created a survey that basically ask questions about how focused entrepreneurs were on each of these elements of the wheel of consumer analysis. Now, we came up uh, about this research project. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about the literature review behind that. Now, Carson and Gilmore in 2000 assert that SMEs will pragmatically, SME basically means small and medium uh, enterprises, so startups is another way you can look at that, or and uh, so they will pragmatically adapt any marketing theory to make it relevant to the way they do business. Whether this looks like or meets the criteria of good textbook marketing has no consideration with an entrepreneur. And this is the case. A lot of entrepreneurs, they may or may not have gone to school. They may or may not have taken a, a marketing course, and they may or may not have been exposed to the, the wheel of consumer analysis theory. Despite that, the wheel of consumer analysis theory was created by looking at what's actually happening in business. And this includes startups. So the wheel of consumer analysis should still hold whether or not the entrepreneur uh, even understands what the wheel of consumer analysis is. They, don't they may not understand that they're closely monitoring the, the, what customers are thinking and feeling, but they may not understand the theory, but they're actually probably doing those things. So, um, that's what Carson and Gilmore had to say on the subject. Next, we look at Chef. Um, in 2011, he wrote an article that said that in developing countries, maybe marketing theories don't apply. And if that's the case, the wheel of consumer analysis maybe doesn't apply in developing countries. This is why we chose Colombia. 
it's not as it's not a west it's not as a developed a country as the United States or Europe, right? It's a considered a developing country, but in some ways, it is a very developed country. The people there are very highly educated. Um, the literacy rates are very high, and things like that. So, what? Um, but basically, what we do then is we looked at um, for Chef. Basically, he was saying that there's there's some elements that may or may not um, exist in a developing country. One is marketing heterogeneity, socio-political governance, uh, whether or not unbranded competition exists. Um, developing countries tend to be characterized by a chronic shortage of resources, and they also tend to have inadequate infrastructure. So, and then Rosa in 2012, added to this list and found that literacy rates can affect whether or not traditional marketing theories and practices hold in developing nations, whether the entrepreneur has a short versus a long-term orientation, or just businesses in general. The idea being that developing countries have, they're basically just trying to survive day by day, so they have a very short-term orientation. Whereas like a well-funded startup in say like San Francisco or Silicon Valley, they have a more long-term orientation focus. They can afford to lose money for five years or more. So very different scenarios there. Um, strength of relationship networks, how developed that is. And that's one thing that actually Columbia has going in its favor, which we realized very quickly that there, there is a very well-developed, uh, Colombians are very social, um, very social individuals, and uh, as a result, they probably have a really st strong relationship networks. Um, and then the priorities and capabilities of entrepreneurs. In developing nations, the idea of what, what Rosa was saying is that maybe they don't have the capabilities and the priorities to like build a huge organization. And as a result, they may not use the traditional marketing theories. They may have to come up with new theories to explain their behavior. So that's what we're up against um, with this research study. And here you can see, here's a chart that has um, Columbia, comparing Colombia to the developed economies based on all 10 of these factors. And you can see from this chart that um, Colombia has mixed versus short versus long-term orientation based on the particular entrepreneur, whereas developed economies tend to have a more long-term orientation. Um, strength of relationship networks in Colombia are high and developed economies, they're mixed. And by the way, we, we came across this list by surveying uh, Colombian business professors to get their opinion on uh, how Colombia ranks compared to developed economies on these different areas. So you can see that, you know, literacy rates are the same, um, the priorities of, entrep of uh, entrepreneurs in both situations could be really uncertain. Um, the capabilities of entrepreneurs, basically Columbia ranked moderate to high, whereas developed economies it would be high. Market heterogeneity varies. Sociopolitical governance in Colombia is adequate, just as it is in developed economies. Unbranded competition, it's no in both situations. Resource shortage in Colombia, yes, it can be access to capital can be very difficult to obtain. Uh, and because of this, there's a chance that uh, traditional marketing theory doesn't apply. Whereas in developed economies, there are there's plenty of access to capital. Um, and then finally, both uh, there's adequate infrastructure in Colombia as well. Moving on then, we have a group of uh, hypotheses that we have. And basically it's, it's just hypotheses based around each of the elements of the wheel of consumer analysis. It says basically consumers' perceptions of the environment affect the decision-making process of entrepreneurs. Cons customers' behaviors affect the decision-making process of entrepreneurs. Consumers' affective and cognitive systems affect the decision-making process of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs of older ventures are less focused on customers' perceptions of the environment. Entrepreneurs of older ventures are less focused on customer behaviors, and they're less focused on affects and cognitions of the customers as well. 
So those were our hypotheses. And basically we created a, a survey and sent it out to 111 uh, entrepreneurs in the Bog greater Bogota area and solicited their feedback. And in this category, we had entrepreneurs who had just started a business within one to two years. Uh, we had other entrepreneurs who had been in business for two to four years, and we had entrepreneurs that had been in business four to 12 years. So based on that, then we had, uh, you know, we could look at how their perception of their customers, how focused they were on their customers was based on like the, how old the company was. So moving on, our results then, basically uh, H1 to H6, hypothesis one to six were supported. And uh, we can also see here that in this chart, it shows that you can see that there's a blue line. It shows that the effective and cognitive um, is related to the effective and cognitive aspects of the customer. The behaviors was the green line and the environment was the, um, the tan line. And from this, you can see that between nine and 15 years that entrepreneurs were much less focused on, they were still focused on the customer. They were still concerned about these things, but they were less focused on the customer as they were as entrepreneurs who had just started the businesses in one to two years. So this basically has a, a number of interesting implications. First off is that marketing theory then applies in Colombia, and a lot of the textbook theories of marketing can be taught in Colombia which can be useful to uh, Colombian business professors, obviously. Um, but it also can be useful for uh, anybody who's looking to start a business in Colombia. Um, they're going to find that there's enough resources available to, they don't have to, they can basically look at and consider marketing theories that, that they've learned, textbook marketing theories in the classroom. Um, the implications, the wheel of consumer analysis applies in Colombia. Um, as the business matures, the laser-like focus on the customer decreases. And if that's the case, what is going on, we were wonder. Um, entrepreneurs may be focusing on other factors rather than the marketing mix. Um, they can be focusing on a number of different things. Uh, they could be, for instance, their businesses could be really growing fast in the later years, and they could be concerned with obtaining additional resources, uh, for expansion, they could be streamlining their operations, they could be cutting costs, or all of those things, basically trying to make the business more efficient. So they're looking, and rather than looking at the, um, the being as focused on the customer as they were in the past, they pretty much feel like they have the marketing mix down. Now they need to get the, or their organizational processes in order to make their business more efficient and to make more profit. So that could be what's going on there. Um, one of the things for future research is our businesses that are lose that lose that marketing focus as they're focusing on other aspects of their company, whatever that may be. Does that mean a loss of opportunity? Do they miss out on changes in the in the customer and things like that? That's a real big opportunity for future research that we can address. Um, in addition. You know, one of the things that uh, is also interesting is that it could also just be the, the personal considerations of the entrepreneur. Um, in Colombia, you may, they, they have a more balanced lifestyle than in America, or the, the, the original goals of the entrepreneur could be um, just to create a business. And once that business is profitable and provides a steady cash flow and s provides a comfortable living, there's not as much drive or need to grow the business. And as a result, some of that focus on the customer may decrease. So that could also be you know, a, a factor there. And so that would be something to look at um, for a future study as well, just to find out what's going on in these later years, in, these, in years four to 12, why are entrepreneurs less focused on the customer? They're still focused enough on the customer that, uh, that it's significant, but, what we've found is that it, they're less focused than, than entrepreneurs are in their first one to two years. Um, international implications, basically Rosa and Chef's 10 factors. Uh, in order for 
marketing theory and marketing practice not to work, um, we think that almost all of these 10 factors would have to apply. So they would have all these 10 factors that we mentioned earlier are going to have to be, um, it's gonna have to be a very much a developing nation, like a very poor area of the, of a, like say a, a poor area in India, for instance, or, or a, you know, in sub-Saharan Africa or something like that, places where that are very undeveloped. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we continue to look for a new context where marketing theories and practices can be discovered in these areas where um, the 10 factors that Rosa and Chef put out there maybe are quite different from advanced economies where, where we tend to have developed these marketing theories. Um, and this brings a good point, basically looking at case study research on the bottom of the pyramid and figure out what's going on there. Um, the bottom of the pyramid is a huge area of opportunity for marketers. Three billion people live on less than $2.50 a day. Um, so this is, that may seem like it's not worth a lot to some companies, and that may be the case, but there's a lot of companies that can successfully compete and work in that marketplace. And as the, those these areas of the world become more developed, obviously there'll be more opportunities for companies operating in that area. So that's just a little bit about this uh, research topic. And we find quite, you know, basically that entrepreneurs are focused on the wheel of consumer analysis. It's a good way of looking at entrepreneurs' thought processes, but more work still needs to be done to figure out you know, basically we also find that it, it works for entrepreneurs in Colombia as well. And, um, but our research also finds, you know, it, is, it does answer some questions, but it also opens up a lot of other questions, which we can then go on to study more. Is like what happens in years uh, four through 12, what, after the business becomes established and maybe the business starts becoming profitable, what's happening, uh, why aren't they, they're still focused on the customer, but why are they not as focused on the customer? What's going on there? This is an area of future research. And, um, and you know, if you're if you have a business and you're getting through year four or you're up in year twelve of your business, are you becoming complacent? Um, if you're not as focused on the customer as you need to be, are you creating opportunity for competitors to come into the marketplace and out compete you, or uh, you know take away from the niche that you have established? So some, that's just a little bit of food for thought that comes from a, a research study that was recently conducted. Um, this paper is gonna be published in the International Journal of Business and Globalization. And uh, you, once it's published, you'll be able to read more about it there if you're interested. Okay, well, thanks for uh, tuning in and um, hope you learned a little bit about uh, what the Wheel of Consumer Analysis, uh, you learned a little bit about what's going on in entrepreneurs' minds, and you learned about some of the uh, factors that could influence uh, whether or not marketing theory and practice works in developing countries. Thanks a lot and appreciate you listening.